Derek Ashong Experience. Brought to you by Cisco, helping us all live more connected on the human network. All right, yo, this is the Derek Ashong Experience. We are broadcasting live from South by Southwest Interactive in Austin, Texas. This is DNA. I got to give big ups to Cisco. Mad thanks for sponsoring this show and the global conversation in that is happening on the human network. You've heard a lot of people talk about technology so far today, and one of the through currents has been that tech is really fundamentally about people. And we are reinforcing and building and growing that human network as we speak. Now, a question that I want to pose to all of you, and I see we've got a lot of dialogue happening on um, Twitter and on Ustream right now. We want to know how you guys got involved with social media. Were you an early adopter? Did you get on, on Facebook back in 2005? Or did you just jump on last August? How did you and when did you start using Twitter and why? Did you use it as a method of reaching out to customers? Did you use it as a means of communicating with your friends? Did you do it because everyone else was doing it? Did you feel bad when you saw that Larry King had a million Twitter followers and you figured you had to at least know what it was all about? What got you involved in social media? And are you one of those folks who just is not feeling it? Or is it someone that, for whatever reason, you don't seem to figure that it's right for you? Call us up and let us know. 866-677-2496. 866-677-2496. I want to know how you got involved with social media and what it means to you. Now, I'll tell you my own personal take. I um, never really thought about what social media is. I got onto MySpace, I think, well, first it was Friendster. And this is way back. I can't even remember what year it was in. I had to be maybe 2003 or 2004. Got involved in Friendster because all my friends were on it, and we would just friend each other, and we would write, this is what we're into, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that was pretty much all we did. Then I remember um, I, a friend of mine uh, was, you know, we were applying for some sort of conference uh, uh, at a user conference, and they were like, oh, check out the website. And the website was actually a MySpace page, and I was like, oh, this is interesting, it's cool, it's kind of like Friendster for bands. So because I have a band, I joined up on MySpace, and we started meeting all our friends and fans, and the coolest thing started to happen. We would go to a show normally, and we'd send out emails to all our people, like, come to the show. Well, what started happening now is we would actually be having an ongoing dialogue with people on our MySpace page, and then they would show up at the show, and it would literally feel like we had made a new friend, like we had created a relationship that didn't exist before. It wasn't a one-way email blast. It was a bi-directional conversation. That was the first thing that really struck me about social media. And I want to know from you guys, what got you connected? What made you want to be a part of that kind of conversation? What got you online and communing with people close to you, far away, whatever it may be? 866-677-2496. Why did you get involved in social media? And if you aren't involved, why not? Now, I have a couple of friends. I, I see one of them is online right now who was a hard head when it came to getting connected. This person did not want to be on Facebook whatsoever. And for those that don't know, Facebook started at Harvard. When Mark Zuckerberg created it, he was an undergraduate. I was actually in grad school at the time. And I personally, I, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight. This is private. I hope that you will not tell anybody. Let's just keep it between me and you. When Facebook first came out, I refused to use it. Why? Because every undergraduate at Harvard was using Facebook as a way of meeting other cute people to hang out and kick it with. And at the time, they were poking each other nonstop. By poke, it's a little button that you push. It says poke, and it lets somebody know that you like them. I don't know if poking still means liking, but I would be in the lunch hall as a graduate student trying to teach the undergraduates and to be a good example. And I'd see all these little girls up in the spot. She's like, Derek, are you on Facebook yet? Are you on Facebook? Oh, my God, you should totally get a Facebook account. And I'm like... I'm going to lose my job. 
So, at first, I wouldn't connect because it was a little too romantic on campus. Then, the next thing you know, they expanded it to other schools in the Ivy League. Then Facebook became a platform for students across the country. And this is while you still had to have a .edu t um, ending on your, uh, on your email address before anyone could join. And at a certain point, I was like, you know, there's so many people on it. It's not just the Harvard thing anymore. It's not just kids from Cabot House trying to hook up with somebody down in Lowell House or Elliott. So I can be a part of it. So I became a Facebook user pretty early, but not as early as my students. And the reason why I got on is because it gave me the ability to better stay connected with people I cared about. See, the thing that happened is each platform was evolving. So it got to the point where, you know, you're using one and it seems cool, but you start to get a little spam malicious. Everybody's just using it to advertise. And then you get to the point where another tool comes in and they're like, we want to make this experience a little more intimate, a little more customized, a little more for you. And I remember, I'll never forget, it was the summer of 2007 when it felt like all of the kids that I grew up with in the Middle East and in these international schools around the world, all of them seemed to sign up on uh, Facebook in like June or July of 2007. And so cats who I had not seen in 14 and 15 years, who are now living in London, who are living in Karachi, in Pakistan, who are living in, in Syria and Lebanon, who are living in South Africa and Nigeria, who are living in Costa Rica, all of these cats all of a sudden got connected on Facebook. And we would literally coordinate to have these reunions. So one of the things that kind of reinforced my relationship with the technology was that ability not only to connect with my friends at school when I was a grad student, not only to, con uh, to connect with the, my alumni network and all of my people who I had close relationships with, but to reconnect with those folks who I really, you know, used to be very close to, but I hadn't seen since the, the seventh or eighth or tenth grade. That was really powerful. I have an, uh, a couple people with thoughts on this. Uh, Nubian Cheetah is online right now. Nubian Cheetah is hollering at us from Twitter. And he says, at Ashong, I didn't really adopt Facebook till someone I trusted invited me. Well, that's a big deal, right? Getting someone who you believe in to tell you that, yo, this is something to check out. This is something to be a part of so that you can feel like, yo, this is not just another little spamish project. It's not something that's going to be in and out. It's something worthwhile, and I can find people that I care about on it. Now from Ustream, Compute Ability says that social media isn't new. It has been renamed and is much easier to connect through better technology. <coughs> Interesting. So basically, social media is something that maybe has been around for a while, but we've branded it in a certain way based upon the technologies that we have got today. For those of you who are watching on Ustream, you've just seen a very cool, brief image of our girl, Ajustine. Big ups on the radio. Don't worry. You are going to meet her momentarily. She is another true social media maven, internet YouTube star, the whole nine. And she just jumped up on our Ustream like, hey. Um. <laughs> It is all good. Also, I got to give a shout out. There is a tweet up happening at South by Southwest that is brought to you by Cisco. Welcome to the human network. Yes, people, we are talking about a tweet up. That means that you and I can get together and communicate live in one particular space. It's going to be great and you should definitely get involved. Once again, yo, I'm live on the air at 866-677-2496. I'm talking to my folks on the radio and online about social media and what it means to us. Ooh, I see a note from someone online who says, you better not be talking about me. Yes, I am talking about you who refused to get on Facebook until I had been screaming it and begging you for a year. I ain't going to put your name out there because people are going to start talking about you. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to meet I Justine, social media maven and internet celebrity. This is the Derek Shong Experience. We'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, yo, we are in effect. Hey, we've got our mics live. This is Derek Ashong here on the DNA X broadcasting live from South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. <laughs> um, this is uh, me. Hopefully, you guys can hear me all well and good. I've just been having an amazing conversation with a number of wonderful guests about social media. And we're trying to give you guys some insight into what it's all about. We just talked a little bit about Facebook. And from Twitter, I see Beth Escoli saying, Adashong, haha, thanks for explaining. I never understood what poking was all about, right? And what we explain is that poking on Facebook is when you, you know, signal somebody to say you're interested in them. Now, it may have a different connotation today, but when it was first started, this was a way of meeting people and being like, hey, I think you're something special. I'll send you a little poke. I do not recommend poking in person. It might not be the best way. You might start with a hello. But a hello, a poke is sort of like a digital high. <laughs> and so, um, Beth Escoli, we are here to educate. So I'm glad you found that uh, useful. Now, I want to introduce you guys to someone who I mentioned shortly before. This is a young lady who I met at an event in Los Angeles. Uh, you stream folks, you can see her sitting next to me looking super cool. <laughs> and basically, uh, I met her. We go to this event, and my friend Sarah Ross is like, oh, you've got to meet Justine. You've got to meet Justine. You've got to meet Justine. And I meet Justine, and she's like just jumping and popping and just like, wow, <laughs> and like cool and like, hey. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you are like me. <laughs> Imagine that. So we invited this amazing young lady who is known to the world as I Justine. And you can find her on Twitter at I Justine, J-U-S-T-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. She is literally a digital media star. Her videos have had more than 25 million views, 16 million on YouTube alone. People listen when she speaks. And I Justine, welcome to the Derek Sean Thank experience. you. I'm very excited. I'm excited that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, you know, so I want to give people some background because I know a little bit about you from when we were hanging out mm -hmm. in Hollywood. But tell these people how you got involved in technology and digital media and how old you were when you did. Uh, yeah, I was, I was 12. You were and 12. I was in sixth grade. And sometimes when I tell people like that, that, you know, I was 12, they're like, oh, was that yesterday? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> It wasn't yesterday. For those on the radio, she looks young, but she's grown. <laughs> she's grown. I am. I'm 25 now. There you go. Oh boy. So I've been doing it for so long. I made my first website when I was 12. And okay. I mean, from that point, I knew that I always wanted to do something in technology. I grew up so, like, far away from anyone. I lived, like, in the middle of the country. You know, I had cow pasture next to me. So, mm -hmm. you know, finding friends for me, it, w it, was, it was difficult because, yeah. you know, everyone was so far away. So once mm. the Internet came along, it was amazing. Wow. So basically the internet kind of opened up your world. It got you connected to all people in a way that you hadn't been before. Yeah. And how, how did it happen? Like, did they just come uh, down with a truck <laughs> one day and say, we've got these posts and we've installed internet? Did your parents come and say, hey, Justine, check out what we brought home? Like, what happened? No, because, I mean, it was, I guess it was a lot more popular because we lived so far out that, I mean, I never even had cable when I was younger. Mm. So, I mean, I missed out on so much. So once we finally had the internet, it was extremely slow, but it really did open up an entirely different world that I mean, I, had, I didn't have access to. Yeah, and what kind of things were you drawn to when you first got online? Um, I always wanted to be a computer programmer. Okay. So, I mean, I'm 12, I'm like you know, <laughs> going in and like looking at the HTML <laughs> code and like trying to code this all by myself. And right. So for me, like, you know, doing that and just being so involved in technology at such a young age, that yeah. it's, it's just turned into what it is today. Now, <laughs> I, I love this because, you know, we had a young lady by the name of Corvita Raven mm -hmm. uh, come in earlier. She's a few years younger than you. Uh, I think she's like 21 mm -hmm. or so. And basically, we were talking about how she got connected. And she said the same thing. At age 12, she started learning about, you know, design and graphic design and how to build websites. Mm -hmm. And by the time she was in high school, she was like programming away and building all kinds of things. Yeah. And now she's a technology consultant at 21. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was an under, uh, in grad school, there was a controversy at Harvard because the then president of the university, Lawrence Summers, who's now uh, in the White House, uh, he had made a statement that, you know, we didn't have a lot of women faculty because women weren't good at math and mm -hmm. sciences. And I'm just interested, like, 
I have just so because we literally had two young women on yeah. the show today who are hardcore techies. So w what do you say to people when they make claims like that? I mean, it's it's changing. I mean, I think before, I mean, it, it was a lot of men, and especially mm -hmm. going to these conferences, it's yeah. still you know heavily dominated by guys, but. Yeah. We're changing, you know. We're doing this, and it's it's interesting too. The computer engineer Barbie. Yeah. So I mean, that <laughs> is crazy as it is, and no, it is not me. Okay. <laughs> Got a lot of tweets about that. That's but it's interesting. It's Wait, guys. Uh, for, again, radio folks. Uh, I Justine <laughs> is letting us know that she is not computer engineer Barbie, but she could be. <laughs> no, but it's it's cool because. It's showing, you know, young girls that it's okay to have this type of aspire. Like, I want to be a computer engineer, yeah. you know, and that's that's really, really cool that they're they're, you know, giving this other avenue to kids. Absolutely, and I think that it's really cool because basically it's becoming something where people <laughs> kind of empower themselves. You create what you want, and mm -hmm. you have a way of having a voice that the whole world can hear. You came up in a rural community, and now you've got an audience literally of millions. So mm -hmm. what happened? How did you go from living on a farm to all of a sudden creating <laughs> things that people would, couldn't get away from, that they had to hear? I mean, I think I've been doing it for so long, too. So a lot of people think, oh, I just started doing this yesterday. I mean, it has been a progression. Yeah. Um, in high school, I had a, <coughs> sorry, a daily random photo site. Mm -hmm. So I would post a picture every day and code each page by hand. And this was before WordPress, before any of these wow. types of things. So I made my own type of blog before Blogs blogging was, was blogging. So yeah. <laughs> it's funny because there's, there's this site called Daily Booth now, uh -huh. which is for taking daily photos. Yeah. And I mean, I was doing this, you know, in high school before any of this existed. So and it's what so did your cool. friends at high school think? Were they like, oh, yo, Justine is like bringing it. This is so cool. Or they're just like, oh, what is she doing online? <laughs> Why can't she join a football team or whatever? Well, what's interesting is I didn't go to my prom. I went to a LAN party. Oh, you're kidding. I kid you not. We played Counter-Strike, uh, <laughs> Quake 3, Unreal <laughs> Tournament. <laughs> I love it. Okay, a LAN. Can you explain to the listeners what an LAN well, is? It is a local area network. Yes. So back then we didn't even have Wi-Fi. So yeah. we would all bring, you know, our, we didn't even have really laptops. laptops. So yeah. we would bring towers and huge CRT monitors to mm -hmm. one person's house. Yes. You know, get a router and plug in our Cat5 and, and it, it's just a network of computers. Wow. So you guys, <laughs> they would come together. Check this out. Like we have these tweet ups and little blog lounges, etc. We all bring our little cute laptops and <laughs> iMacs and whatever. Everybody's going to have an iPad in a couple weeks. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> these kids were like, yo, forget that. We're bringing our real tower computers, CRT. That's cathode ray tube for you kids out there. I know you haven't heard of it, but it's not a flat screen. It is heavy. It is Let heavy me tell you. duty. <laughs> and instead of going to prom, y'all had a local area network party. We did. And it was pretty much, I mean, it was funny because everyone's like, you're going to regret not going to prom. You're, it's uh -huh. the time of your life. I'm like, if that's the time of my life, yeah. then I don't have much to look forward to. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is one of the things that always bugs me out. People used to say to me, like, oh, my God, college is going to be the best time of your life, and it's the greatest time of your life, and, and college is as good as it gets. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. First of all, I had a great time in college, I but I was too. like, okay, yeah. so at 22, 21, my life is over? Is that what you're telling me? Like, it's all downhill from here? And I found that for me personally, my life has gotten better and better and better in part because I've wanted it to be, and I've been creating it that way. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about the conversations we've been having today is that technology, so many people seem to be using technology as a tool for enhancing the other things that they're interested in that they care about. Definitely. You know, so for you, you were taking images of the world around you. Mm -hmm. And you start uploading them, and that becomes you basically are like a pre blog blogger, <laughs> effectively, <laughs> right? Yeah. Fully cutting edge. <clears throat> and then here we go with the advent of digital video and YouTube. And what did you do when that came into play? Um, I, I started actually posting videos first on MySpace. There was actually okay. this website before MySpace. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Campus Hook, and I think it was mm -hmm. run actually by the College Humor guys way okay. back in the day. Alright. So I started using that, and then MySpace came along. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> so I started posting videos as soon as they allowed videos, and that was when I was in college. And people were like, when are you posting your next one? I was like, I, oh. um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I kept posting and just posting yeah. random things, and, and people kept watching and kept watching, and then... You know, all these other websites, video sites popped up, and I would put my videos everywhere on every single video website wow. I could find. That was in 2006. Okay. So, so that's <laughs> like right, because I don't think YouTube was invented. It only launched in 2000. 
2005. It was like 2005, yeah. So yeah. it was still around, but it was still early. So I mean, yeah. I, I pushed stuff to YouTube, to Yahoo, to Jump Cut, which was actually bought by Yahoo. Okay. Um, so it's like all these random websites that I would just, I would find, and, and I just would engage in random audiences. And the people mm -hmm. that you meet online, it's just, it's unreal because yeah. they're all around the world. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, you find a way to have a conversation with a global audience. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, you know, I, I've been bringing it up a few times today because I heard people say, yo, digital media, it breaks us apart and it keeps us disconnected from each other. But I found that it's still um, a way of connecting. It, I feel like I'm closer to people around the world rather than more disparate from mm -hmm. them because you can't just jump up on an airplane anytime you want to go someplace <laughs> but anytime i go online i'm hearing people you know uh, somebody tweeted from cameroon last week and i shouted them out on the air and they sent me a message later in the week and they're like i can't believe you <laughs> shouted me out from cameroon on there i'm like yeah because i want people to know that this is a global show it's a it global is. experience it is. and the technology makes it easy for us mm -hmm. to do that and especially once i found youtube i mean that's it's such a huge audience there yes that it's unbelievable i mean people it's, it's not just people everyone's like oh it's just the united states i'm like no, no. like when, when the whole the chilly earthquake happened i mean i yeah. was getting messages from, you know, people over there that were that watch my videos. They're like, can you please send a tweet and can you do this and this? Yep. this? And then it's like, you know, th it's, you know, it affects everyone, you it know, these, these disasters. It's not just that area anymore. I mean, it's everywhere. Absolutely. It's everyone is touched and everyone has a chance to respond in easy ways. I remember I was sending text messages to make my contribution. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I did it online as well, but I could do it instantly as I heard, as soon as I heard there was a problem. Yeah. It's it, and it's so easy now. It's, it's so <laughs> easy and it makes it so that all of you can be a part of it. You and kids that's have what it we're doing. Exactly. You <laughs> kids. That's why we're here today <laughs> to help you be a part of South by Southwest Interactive. We're broadcasting live from Austin Texas. I am here with I Justine, who is an internet maven. She is a young lady who is a programmer. She is a video blogger and has basically developed an audience of people who listen when she speaks. Now, I'm curious, what kind of things do you talk about? It's more like listen when I tweet. You know. <laughs> she said, listen when she <laughs> tweets. So whatever she does, they're paying attention. <laughs> no, I'm also not a programmer anymore. That, that used to be my passion. But yeah. I, my, when I would program, mm -hmm. my, my instructor was like, your designs are a lot better than your code. So oh. I became a designer. Okay. But the stuff that I talk about is anything from technology to covering these types of events, Macworld, yeah. CES, to just making funny spoof videos of popular songs, <laughs> which is my, my, my personal favorite. That's your favorite, of course, so naturally. It's a lot of entertainment meets yeah. technology. That is great. I think that that intersection of entertainment and technology is so powerful right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, I was talking earlier to some of our guests about how there seems to have been this disconnect where a lot of the old media was not comfortable with moving into this new world and connecting with these new technologies. They have to. But they have to, you know. And, and I'm wondering, like, where do you see things going? Because obviously you've been at the cutting edge of a lot of things. What do you see happening now and what do you think is the potential role of technology in society and in media as a whole. I mean, it's going to be huge because a lot of these people on YouTube are getting mm. more views than TV shows. Absolutely. And then TV stations are looking at this like, what are we going to do? We need <laughs> to get on YouTube, but how do we do it? Yeah. So for them, it's kind of figuring out what do we do, what content do we put out there. Um, and a fun project that I think that I was really excited to take part in, mm -hmm. I was the Twitter correspondent for the VMAs, their pre-show. Oh, awesome. So That's I think that was like the first thing that I saw mm -hmm. that really, really tied in social media to the entertainment world. So it, yeah. it brought, like, I, and it was, I was so excited because I got to be the person to, you know, take my internet digital world and yeah. bring it to a much larger audience on TV watching this. Absolutely. So it was cool because I was watching real time as the tweets were coming in about yeah. people that were walking the red carpet. An example that I saw too was, um, I think it was Pink and Shakira. Uh -huh. They wore the same dress. <laughs> so I, could, I was up on top of like Radio City uh -huh. and, and the music hall. And I'm looking down, I'm like, I think they have the same dress. Yeah. So, but I wasn't sure. So I took to Twitter and yeah. I looked and people were talking about it. So mm. it was kind of like, these two worlds were completely colliding. And well, you know, this is, so this is something, I, I gotta say, like, I love being here. I so love being here because it feels like I fit. I was at an event yesterday <laughs> and there are four of us standing around talking, right? And each of us have got our Blackberry out and we're like tweeting, we're like, 
like, oh, are you on Twitter? Okay, let me find, let me follow you so that we can talk on our Blackberries instead of right here. I person. know. <laughs> <laughs> but and people always like, Derek, you're always tweeting and you're always on your Blackberry and what's wrong with you? And I'm like, here, it's all good. It is. What? It is okay. I know. It's okay. You're Everybody accepted. Feels cool. It's okay exactly. to be on your phone. And that's why I'm telling them it's geek heaven out here, y'all. Y'all are missing out. You are. Bring your Blackberries. I want to see your iPhone. <laughs> let your geek flag fly. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, because one of the things that I love to do is I love to live tweet events. They're so fun. And I remember during the campaign last year, uh, you know, I, I would always like live tweet the debates and mm -hmm. be like, oh, well, this so -and so said this, this and this, this. And we literally be, and for the, again, for those who don't know, live tweeting is basically when something is happening and we all start commenting on what's happening and we use a common hashtag. And the hashtag is that little pound symbol, the number sign, with some words next to it so that everyone knows what's happening. If you click on the hashtag, you can see the entire conversation for everyone who's having it. So right now, if you go online and you put in the hashtag pound the DNA X, you can see everything that people are saying about this conversation right here. So anyway, I would always be live tweeting yeah. the debates with my friends. And I remember one time we had a concert. We were opening for Arrested Development in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, I couldn't bring my Blackberry on stage. The band would kill me. <laughs> so what <laughs> happened is, like, we did the show. And then I sat down backstage. And the whole time, I couldn't watch because there was no TV mm -hmm. there. I, I, I literally watched the debate, quote, unquote, via Twitter. Because every interesting line or comment that was made, my friends were tweeting. And I would hear, and I would hear, and I would hear, and I'd comment back. Um, I remember when we had the, um, the, uh, the Grammys, I was live tweeting that. And I went to the NAACP Image Awards the other day. And I was like, I'm not going to live tweet because <laughs> I'm here. And I don't want people staring at me. They, they're like, we've got cameras in the room. And I want them looking at the one idiot who's not watching the stage. <laughs> but I would periodically be looking. And it was so funny to see the comments from all of my friends yes. about what was happening there live. And I feel like it's just a great way to have an experience on multiple platforms. What is it if you can't be there? I mean, I, I was, well, I didn't watch the Oscars. I was in yeah. Costco shopping, reading <laughs> tweets. And then, exactly. <laughs> and I forgot that it was on and I tweeted, man, I'd love to live in Costco for a week. Wouldn't that be fun? And everyone's uh, like, are you not watching the Oscars? I'm like, whoops. Uh, I was <laughs> like, okay, I'm missing out. <laughs> so then I just, I went through Twitter and I got, yeah. you know, people are giving you all the good stuff that you need to know. Exactly. And, you know, it's funny because sometimes technology, like, battles each other, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was at an Oscar party last Sunday, and um, my friends were none, like, the friends who were with me at that event, none of them are that digital media mm -hmm. heavy. And so I am like, I said I was not going to live tweet the Oscars. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to live tweet the Oscars. I'm just going to enjoy it. But I lied. Yes. So, <laughs> of course, and these kids want to, they want to rewind the DVR. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm trying to live tweet, but we're not watching a live feed. I'm like, fast forward, get back to where it's current. Why TV click that button? <laughs> click that button. Because I'm like, why? Why? We don't get it. And I'm like, for those who don't know, if I am trying to say what's happening on the stage right now, and you people are TiVoing the action and keep rewinding, then by the time I come to comment about who I think might win, my friends have already announced it. I've seen it on my phone before it's on my TV, and then I, I feel bad, right? Let's let our technology work hand in hand together. And that's bad, too, with, like, the East Coast, West Coast airings. Oh, my God. I'm like, thanks it's for ruining worst. American Idol for me. It, oh, forget about I it. You, I know. You have to stay and, and away. The, and the Olympics, it's like I totally, I couldn't turn on the New York Times. I couldn't I w read anything with Olympics on Twitter because they're telling me who won. And yeah. I'm like, I, I want to watch Ice Dancing. I, I, I can't that. watch Ice Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, all right. So I'm wondering, like, so for the people that are kind of tuning in who are maybe not as digital media savvy, mm -hmm. You know, what would you say to them? What, why should people be getting involved in the social media world? I mean, it's all, again, you know, you can't force people to do this if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've found so many of my friends. I, I joined Twitter back in 2006, so this yeah. was, it was very early. So I would literally take my friends' phones and sign them up. And then they would start oh, getting my Twitter tough. updates. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> so I think it's something, you know, if you, if you have friends that are already doing it, just, yeah. just get on, start trying it, find out which website's good for you. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter. YouTube. That's so what's great. up. <laughs> Yo, you guys, this is the Derek Ashong Experience. We are live with I Justine at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. We are at South by Southwest Interactive. We are talking about digital media, social media, how technology can be a part of influencing and improving upon our world. Some folks from Ustream, Compute Ability, wants to know 
if you have, well, Computability says that iJustine has multiple Twitter accounts, so they want to know which account do you use the most? Um, I mean, I, I have two accounts. One that I use to just reply to people, okay. and then my main account, I probably tweet like seven times a day. So I use them okay. both gotcha. hand in hand. And what tell the people which what both of them are? Um, iJustine is my main account, and mm -hmm. Other iJustine is my reply account. So <laughs> if you get a reply from Other iJustine, <laughs> it's me. I just, I just reply. I don't want to spam my, <laughs> my entire feed. Yo, there you go. Other <laughs> Justine is her reply account so that she doesn't just because that's another funny thing is like so I, I, I wonder about there's got to come a moment where you get some Twitter cat basically some people will follow me and I'll check mm -hmm. out their site and if I look on your Twitter account and all I see is at replies and nothing else then I'm not as excited to follow you because you're just having a private conversation and I don't feel connected to it yeah but if I see you commenting and talking about things that are in your life it gives me like a window into your world. And see, that's hard too. I think that's something that Twitter needs to figure out too. Yeah. Because a part of Twitter is the conversation Absolutely. and the interaction with other people. So that's why I started another account. So I'm yeah. just like, uh, that's all there is. Thousands and thousands of replies all that day long. So, funny. That's so, funny. <laughs> so it makes it easier. Yeah, I, I tied my Facebook. This is like inside baseball over here. All the non-social media people are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> well, Twitter and at replies. <laughs> Look, I tied my Facebook account to my Twitter account. Oh, jeez. Right? Oh yeah, because I was like, I used to send notes on Facebook. And then I would tweet all the time, but it got to the point where I, I travel so much mm -hmm. that I'm not necessarily on my computer. I'm always on my phone. Yeah. So it was easier to read my Facebook updates on my phone and to tweet on my phone and to let my Twitter do my Facebook status I updates. I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's the coolest thing. But some people will keep writing to me and they'll be like, well, Derek, I mean, you're on Facebook, like, all the time. Like, how do you find so much time to be on Facebook? You're I'm like, just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, you know, I just stay connected. You know, I'm good like that. I'm nice like that. <laughs> <laughs> You've cheated. I do the same. I think a lot of people do, too, because there's too much going on. You don't have time to update everything. Yeah. So, thankfully, a lot of these sites work very well together. Exactly. They're integrated. Mm -hmm. And so what we're basically talking about is how technology facilitates our communication. As you can tell, both I, Justine, and myself, Derek Ashong, are very shy people. Very. We're not too talkative. <laughs> we just, you know, we're kind of introverted. We stay closed into ourselves. Um, we and do. Yeah. And social media has given us an opportunity to expand the conversation beyond the, no, I'm, I'm totally lying. Well, I, I talk to anyone on the street. But a lot of people are like that. So yeah. that's why they go online. It's true. And, and it's like they get to have a different persona. Mm -hmm. And they get to enable that persona to try things they haven't tried before. So for those of you who may be a little bit shy, Get on Twitter. Nope. Get on Twitter. <laughs> no one's going to bite you. We're not going to hurt you. Just try it. Check it out. See what it's out all about. I Justine, thank you so much thank for joining so us. Much. This has been absolutely bananas. We got to have you in the studio we sometime will. when we're in LA. It'll be great. All right, love it. Yo, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more from South by Southwest. You listen to the Derek Ashong Experience. Come check out what's next. We'll be right back. Go ahead, man.
You're listening to Oprah Radio. Did you know it took 13 years for television, four years for the Internet, and three years for the iPod to get 50 million users, while Facebook added 100 million users in less than nine months? Welcome to the Derek Ashong Experience. Broadcasting live from the South by Southwest Interactive Conference in Austin, Texas. Hey, 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 this is DNA. You are listening live to the Derek Ashong Experience. As you just heard, we are broadcasting from South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. And we're having a total blast. Just had an awesome conversation with I Justine, who is literally an internet celebrity. And he's really, I think, putting a, a, is a great example of how technology can empower people. And uh, we had a great conversation with at Corvita as well. And both at Corvita and at I Justine were incredible young ladies who learned to write code as kids and basically took that knowledge of themselves, uh, that knowledge uh, of technology, basically how to uh, create using these platforms, and basically they translated into having a whole different kind of voice where people listen when they speak. They have become tastemakers. And I think that's part of the power of technology, right? It's not that we are here to talk about tech for tech's sake. What we are trying to convey is how tech can be a tool for the improvement of the world that you and I live in. And that is truly exciting. For those that don't know, you can hear us live online at facebook.com slash Derek Ashong Experience. You can also check us out at twitter.com slash Ashong. And we've got a gang of people watching on Ustream. Ustream.tv slash Derek Ashong Experience. Yo, <laughs> so I got to give you a little bit of what is um of what is going on right here with us now as we speak. <laughs> Um, and it seems that, oh, we're getting a lot of love. I see that Harriet Seitler from t is telling us on Twitter that she is going to incorporate the word bananas when something or someone is cool. Who's bananas? Well, obviously, this show is bananas, y'all. It's absolutely off the hook. And so is South by Southwest. We got here yesterday. The first thing that I did was take a nap because it's just so intense. So much is happening. It's just, like, absolutely uh, off the hook. And I was like, you know what, before things jump up too hardcore, I'm going to take a little time to get my head in order and be ready for this experience. And that was exactly the right thing to do. Because when we started hanging out, it, I mean, we could have been out literally all night. We were hanging out with our girl Crystal yesterday. She came in today. She was like, yo, she was hanging. She was out until 2 a.m. and got up at 5 a.m. to continue her work on the conference. Well, we first went to an event that was sponsored by Microsoft. And we met some amazing people there doing some cool things. We got to learn about some of the new technologies that they're developing. And, well, actually, we didn't learn anything. We mostly just hung out. <laughs> and we got to the front, and they said, yo, we've got these feather boas. And they wanted to know if we wanted to wear the feather boas. And I was like, well, I'll wear one. And what color would you take? And they had blue, and they had purple, and they had this bright, like, almost fluorescent orange. And I was like, yo, I mean, seriously, you're walking around at night with a purple or a blue boa? That could be dangerous. People can't see you coming. What if you get hit by a vehicle? I've got to go with the fluorescent orange boa because everybody will know. I remember trying to catch a cab and the looks I was getting as I was styling in my feather boa. And for those on Ustream, you can see I had my cool sunglasses on. Aw, oh, yeah, keeping it hot, baby. Anyway, I was standing out there with my cool shades and my orange feather boa. And this lady walks by randomly on the street. She just turns to me and she's like, nice boa. And I was like, thank you. And we just smiled and she kept going. And I was like, yes, I'm making my fashion statement. <laughs> anyway, so the first event was really great. You see a bunch of people in this club wearing giant feather boas <laughs> and crazy sunglasses. And we were taking awesome photos. And we'll post some of them up on the Facebook page so that you can check them out later. Facebook.com slash Derek Ashong Experience. You know, one of the funny things is like, everybody who I met, is somehow interested in the world of technology. But the thing is, and I want to dispel the rumors for those that are still trying to figure out how to get connected and are not sure about how this all works. 
These are regular people. All of us are just normal folks, just like you. We just love to be connected with each other. As I broadcast every day, I am twi tweeting constantly to let people know what's happening, who I'm talking to, what we're thinking about, what have you. And folks are replying to me like nonstop. And it's a great thing because it just gives us an opportunity to expand the conversation, right? And that's what it's all about. That's what it's always about, expanding the conversation. Um, and I think that that's got a real legitimate social value. I am a firm believer that it's difficult to find commonality with people unless you have some kind of understanding of who they are and what they're all about. And when I get opportunities to go out and talk to people, which I do a fair amount, I always ask them to ask this question, who am I, right? And that doesn't mean who am I, Derek Shaw. You should have read the bio when I came in. That's not the question. It's who am I, right? As in me, Joey Johnson, or me, uh, Janis Joplin, or whomever the case may be. Who am I? And what does it mean to be me, right? And the thing is, like, you cannot fully come to an understanding of who you are and what it means to be you if you don't come to an understanding of some of the people who are and are not like you, right? There are things that you might take for granted. Let's say you grew up on a farm, like as uh, uh, Justine was just talking about, and let's say that you didn't have cable TV and you didn't know anybody else who did. You might presume that most people live their lives coming home and sitting at the dinner table and talking to each other. Whereas when you jump up into the city and you find that it comes to dinner time and everybody grabs a plate and goes and sits in front of the television and they watch a show together, that's a certain kind of family communion and it's well and good. But maybe in your community where you didn't have that TV and you sat down every day and you had dinner and you talked to each other, you know, there's a certain value and a bond that might have been created there a value and a bond that you might take for granted and not really see as anything other than just what's done if you didn't have the chance to experience something else. At the same time, let's say that you were that city kid and you'd grab your plate and you'd come and you'd sit down in front of the television and maybe your mom and your dad would turn on the news and talk to you about what was happening there and what their thoughts were and what their impressions were about it and you're getting all this information but maybe it's being translated in new ways now you might take that for granted you know it might not mean that much to you it's just the way that things are and yet someone else may not have that same opportunity to have information coming at them from around the world and have people there willing and able to translate for them, right? So these are ways in which technology is able to bring us together. And I'm curious, have you guys had this experience? Do you believe that technology is bringing us closer together? Or do you believe that technology is taking us further apart? I want to hear from you. 866-677-2496. That's 866-677-OPRA-XM. Is technology bringing the world closer together or forcing us further apart? Hit us up on Twitter as well, twitter.com slash Ashong, facebook.com slash Derek Ashong Experience, and ustream.tv slash Derek Ashong. We want to hear from you. Is technology bringing us closer, or is it driving us further apart? I got to tell you, in my experience, I've seen a little bit of both, right, as far as what it's like in um, experiencing conversations where you maybe in a family environment, you sit together and you talk to each other. Or maybe it's like you sit in front of a tube and you get information from there. When I was living in the Middle East, we had two channels. Uh, there was one in English and one in Arabic. And my Arabic is terrible right now, you guys. I can only say the basics. I can count. You know what I'm saying? I can count a little something, something. I can do my normal greetings. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But most of what I really remember are all the cuss words. And I'm not allowed to say those on the radio. So you have to catch me live in full effect to get all of that extra flavor. But. The fact of the matter is part of the reason I picked up the language uh, quickly at the time that I was growing up there is because I had one channel in Arabic and one channel on TV. Uh, I'm sorry, one channel on TV in English. Now, my Arabic wasn't strong enough to really get deep with the Arabic shows all the time, so we would watch the English shows. But sometimes they weren't all that exciting. And so 
we basically uh, decided that it would be fun to just do cool family things together. So we used to sit down at the dinner table with no TV on and talk to each other and just vibe with the parents, oh, vibe, vibe, vibe with the parents and the sister, the whole nine. We came to the States, and all of a sudden, we got all these TV channels, and so we would sit down in front of the TV together, and my parents would really break down what was going on. This was my political education. So I found a way that technology, in a way, uh, it, some people will say, well, it, it broke up the family dinner, but at the same time, it enabled my parents to teach me about politics when I was a teenager. Well, I want to know from you, did technology bring you closer together? Do you think technology is driving us further apart? 866-677-2496. Charles, you are on the air. What's your experience? Hi, there. Uh, hey, mine you is just basically, yeah, my experience is basically uh, just, it makes the world smaller to me, which is okay. uh, kind of neat. Um, I've been to Africa, and that I can actually you communicate go? with those same people. Um, Liberia, actually. Cool. Liberia, Africa. Okay. And um, so I was able to be able to, I can still talk with those same folks via uh -huh. technology. So I think that's pretty neat. That is awesome. So basically, and how long ago did you go? I'm about seven years ago. Seven years ago. Wow. And w what means did you use to communicate with the folks or to stay in touch? Um, cell phone, um, Facebook, uh, it's the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> the whole nine. The whole nine. That is awesome. So basically, having gone to Liberia, and I'm assuming you haven't been back in seven years. Correct. So having, you haven't been back in seven years, and yet you've been able to stay connected with the friends that you met over there. I think that is a great example, Charles. Thank you so much for sharing that. This is exactly what I'm talking about, folks. Sometimes it may seem on the surface that, well, hey, if everyone is online, they're on their laptop, they're on their phone, how can they be connecting with other people? But that's the whole point. We are using these tools in order to connect with other people. That's why we're there all the time. We're not there because I just like the feel of my Blackberry, although these buttons are so smooth. No, we're there because when I push upon these buttons, someone is on the other end giving me their perspective on life, the universe, and everything. And it is wonderful to be able to be a part of that, right? I think that this is something that really gives us a better and a deeper connection with more people at a time. What do you think? 866-677-2496. Is technology bringing us closer? Is it driving us apart? Juanita, welcome to the experience. What are your thoughts? Oh, my. First of all, thank you for taking my call. I just love your program. <laughs> I, I'm a 62-year-old. 62-year-old. Female from San Diego, California. 62-year-old female from San awesome. Diego, a great town, by the way. Hey, great town, and I'm originally from Chicago, great place to be from. Absolutely. And love your show. I love the way technology is bringing you and my culture together. Here I am, mm -hmm. talking to you. Wow. Uh, it's awesome. Exactly. It's bringing, and, and this is the thing, you know, people think that technology is just about something for young people. Some people think about our show, and like we talk about, it's a new generation take on life, art, society, politics. And I try to explain to them, oh, when we say a new generation, we don't mean like a new generation as in it's only people of a certain age. We mean it's a new way of thinking and connecting and wanting to be interconnected and not stuck in old ways of thought, but wanting to learn about each other. And that's great. I feel like having this opportunity to do this brings all kind of folks into the fold and you're calling us and 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 you've been hopefully enjoying the broadcast as we've been you know doing this for the, the last couple of months Immensely. and well so one Immensely. of the things one of the things that i'd love to ask you anita is like do you feel like your peers people in your age group have, have your friends been open to the new technologies have they also been connecting or have some of them been more yes. hesitant what are you what's your experience i feel that uh the more people that I connect with, whether they're my grandchildren, mm -hmm. my, my own adult children, or my friends, they're seeing that, hey, look, you know, I want to communicate with you. I have a brother in Korea. Yeah. You can Skype me. I want to see you when I talk to you. That is it, awesome. My God, it's just free. It's, I want to see your expressions, even if it's a little delayed. When could we do this before? Never. I love I it. Family. 
Uh huh. I was out of town on an emergency. Mm-hmm. I'm missing my children, missing my grandchildren. I said, Skype me. I want to see my grandchildren. That's I beautiful. Want to, I can almost smell everybody looking at us through the internet. Oh, awesome. that is so sweet. And you know, this is something that I've seen happening a lot. And and for those who are just joining us, this is the Derek Shung Experience, broadcasting live from Austin, Texas. Well, I need to thank you so much for calling. I've had the great experience of seeing technology literally bridge the gap between people. I met a, a, a brother online, a, a producer producer named Coptic, who's worked with a lot of big hip-hop artists. For those who are hip-hop heads, everyone from Raekwon, from the Wu-Tang, from Wu-Tang to folks from Mob Deep, all these different crews. And he emailed me because he'd heard online from another friend that I was an MC and he checked out some of my work and was like, why don't you come together and let's do a record that's bringing top American and African MCs together just to express and collaborate in our creativity. We did that a few uh, years ago where we actually had a conference where we had MCs in Kenya and Accra and in Boston and in Norway and Brazil talking to each other about our artistry. Technology is making our world within a hand's grasp. We can reach out and touch each other. And that is a beautiful and a powerful thing. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to bring together a group of people who are actually literally doing projects that are explicitly designed to change the world. Do not turn away. This is the Derek Ashong Experience. We'll be back in a few.